Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 92 of the Awkward Water Sport Guys podcast. On today's show, we have a special guest, Lieutenant Seth Wagner of the Florida Fish and Wildlife. Seth, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. And always, we have my wonderful co-host, Kevin O'Neill. Kevin, what's up? Hey, what's shaking, man? You know, there's nothing I love more than talking to the FWC. Like, it just (laughs) warms the cockles of my heart. (laughs) When I get to see you guys on my docs or on our podcast, like the FWC, this like, if you don't know, they just strike fear, man. Like you go down, you see the FWC on the dock. I see the FWC on my dock. I'm like, okay, who's dead? Who screwed something up? Like, like what happened here? They, I don't feel like they ever come by just to pay us a friendly visit and, you know, shoot the shit like you're doing today, Seth. <laughs> I was going to ask you if you had to put some uh, context into your, <laughs> when you're meeting us. <laughs> On the show, like not in like an official capacity where you're like levying me with a bunch of tickets for screwing up. We're just trying not to that I get a lot of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to hear a funny story, man? And I'll keep it short because I want to get to the I'll get to the uh, the bone the the meat of this thing. But um, when I first got started in business and I started out here in North Florida. Um, you know, when we're out, in the, when we're out in like the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic, we'd be doing water sports like off the parasail boats. We'd do scurfing and kneeboarding or, or boogie, you know, like whatever we would do out there in, in our off time when I was younger. We would never wore life jackets, dude. You know what I mean? I'm like licensed captain. I'm on the water. Like I'm, you know, pretty confident swimmer. We'd be out the in the Atlantic scurfing, wakeboarding. No life jacket ever. Only nerds wore life jackets. So one day we go out on our pontoon. It's me. Um, my, uh, one of our competitors owns a water sports company and, um, our kids and we're out there messing around on a kneeboard and, uh, and Ben's like, you're going to wear a life jacket. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to wear a life jacket. Like, no, man. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. We're in three feet of water, dude. If I, if I drown out here, like <laughs> I'm, my kids got to wear them, but I'm not. And man, we get um, all of a sudden, man, we're I'm like surrounded by like county sheriff, like FWC. There's all these. I'm like, man, what's going on, dude? Ben's like, it's the life jackets. I'm like, get out of here. Are you serious? He's like, yeah. And, uh, and I'll keep it short, but it was like the, the arresting, not the arresting officer, but whatever. The officer on duty is just like, you know, I was like, come on, man. Like, yeah, I'm a captain. I got it. And they like talk amongst themselves. And man, he came back with tickets. He's like, man. You know, the only reason we're writing you these guys tickets is out of everybody. You guys should know better. I'm like, I think you're writing me a ticket because of your ball buster. I'm not going to lie, man. But, you know, that's personally what I would think. And, uh, yeah, man, they, they got us. And so from then on out, man, like, yeah, I, no, I'm playing it by the rules every single time now, Seth. The last thing I need to do is get under you guys and your bad grades. Cause I feel like you're the coolest one I've met so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that, but I, I would imagine it's it's it, and I used to do the same thing when I was out on patrol. Is, is we do expect a higher uh, uh, example from our pros and, and people that have the knowledge out there to, to set the example to everyone else. So Fair that's enough. Yeah, sure. it's true. It's 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 true, and that's what we're talking about today, man. Setting an example. Um, we brought we brought Seth on the show because um. Just out of dumb luck, uh, Seth and I, uh, our paths crossed, and we started talking about uh, boating laws, and um, and then we, you know, he educated me on what we're here to talk about today, which is there is now a state livery boater safety um, law in place, and I'll give up the floor to you, Seth. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about it's six oh six, right? Yeah, correct. It's it's the Boating Safety Act is what it eventually. Uh, Turned in, but it was under uh, uh, Senate Bill 606 when it started off. So, amongst some other things that were adjusted uh, in that bill, um, all liveries now that are in operation in the state are going to be required to get a no cost livery permit from FWC. Uh, what that does is one, it lets us know who's out there operating liveries lets us be able to, to get with them and say, hey, here's the regulations and requirements that you need to do as a livery to keep your public and your customers safe. And then so we have some means of, of trying to, to regulate and, and uh, get in cooperation with those businesses. So what, what do you, I mean, so, so if you talk to a, you know, a dumb boat guy like me, I mean, I say, hey, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got my permit. I got my, my temporary certificate. I've got my livery permit. So what, what is the difference between this? Like what will be the procedures now that we need to get our livery permits from, you know, in the past where we just did maybe had like a livery inspection? Um, 
you know, that sort of thing. Right. So uh, it, I'm waiting on the rule language to be approved. We had to create rule language so we as an agency could uh, uh, do the program to issue permits. Um, so that's waiting to go in front of the uh, uh, FWC commission. It was supposed to be held earlier, but Hurricane Ian changed that. So sometime in November, from what my understanding is, is when the commission meeting will go, and that's when the rule language will go in front of the commission for approval, comment, any updates, those kind of things. Basics, though, what that rule language is going to do is describe how we are going to issue those permits. I am trying to make that as easy on you as liveries because that also makes it easy on myself and my staff to issue those permits. It's going to be all electronic via email for right now. Uh, there may be a system in place down the road that's kind of automatic, but you're basically going to send an email with a couple of different documents that we already have uh, set forth. It's going to be part of the rulemaking as well. Those documents are already there. Um, you'll send that email back with those documents signed or whatever, you know, checkbox and all that kind of stuff. We're going to send you a permit uh, in electronic format in your email and you're rocking and rolling. We are setting those permits up to where they are annual permits, so they will expire depending on, say, either the applicant's birthday or the business uh, date that they uh, were incorporated, those kind of things, because that way we can stagger them out over the year and not, every, and not have everybody at, trying to apply for one every December. So you may get your very first permit, and it may not expire until sometime later in 2024, 2025, because that way we stagger everybody out. Again, giving you at, at a minimum of 12 months, if not more, to make sure that permit goes. So that the whole process basically is we're trying to make it as easy as uh, as possible for you as well as us. So Seth, um, you know, t uh, aside from the uh, the permitting, what do you, what would you say is like the biggest the, um, the biggest problem that you see out on the water um in the industry like what's the, what's like with the, the hardest thing that you have to combat right now uh, it's the education piece of it so the biggest uh reason that this part of the bill and in, in requirement came along is what we consider all of the uh illegal liveries so think of all the guys that are out there that have their own personal jet skis or their friends skis pwcs whatever and they're just renting them for the weekend they're going on Twitter, they're going on Facebook, you know, those kind of things and saying, hey, rent my ski for three, four hundred bucks. They're not giving any instruction to someone on how to operate it. More than likely, they've never operated a PwC before in their lives. They're not checking to make sure they've got voter education or anything like that. So they may not know anything about rules of the water, you know, navigation rules, what a, what a certain signs and regulatory zones mean, those kind of things. And they're just sending them out. A lot of times they're getting, in, you know, they're getting hurt. They're getting in accidents, serious accidents where people are, you know, losing limbs and things like that. And they have no recourse because they weren't illegal livery. There was no insurance. There's no business license to go after. And it becomes a, a civil process between the victim and the owner. Well, wouldn't the victim be somewhat responsible? You know, they're, they're obviously skirting the, the reputable companies because they're trying to save money in some cases. I, you, you could agree to that to an extent. I wouldn't say that they're saving any money in the long run because the prices are pretty comparable and they may not even know. So I, I wouldn't, you know, ignorance isn't always uh, an a, a, uh, explanation to something, but you get somebody from out of state, they, they don't know who's reputable and who isn't. They're just seeing somebody's ad and the, the way things are created now on Facebook and everything else. You can look like you are a full-on company, been in business for years with this great website and everything else and not be a true business. No license, no insurance, no anything. Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor for the month, the Von Mack Agency. Von Mack is a full service digital marketing agency with a focus on tour and activity operators. They offer it all SEO, websites, pay per clicks, logos, content writing. If it's online marketing, they got you covered. As we mentioned before, it's uber important to hire an agency that understands our industry. And the Von Mack Agency knows water sports. Trust me. And they do all the shit that you don't want to do, they do all the shit that you're probably not very good at and they are look 
for listeners of the show, Merica herself is giving a free consult. All right. If nothing else, give her a shout, give her a call, take 30 minutes out of your day. More importantly, take 30 minutes out of her day so she can get you straight on your marketing needs. That's right. What do you have to lose? Head to vonmacagency.com and go to the contact us page to get started. Again, vonmacagency.com. And most importantly, let them know you were sent by the AWG guys. All right, let's get back to the show. Um, so do you see a lot of problems like this too from actual established liveries? You know, like somebody that's get so in North Florida, the reason I ask this is because I see this almost semi problematic as well. So, um, I, I, I love the law. Like I hate, <laughs> I hate when government gets involved in my business, but on, on this side of things, like, you know, so you can get like the boater, get my boat or, um, what's the other one boat setter. And, you know, as far as like a business side, you look at a platform like this and you go, Hey, this is great. These guys are disrupting. They're disrupting the industry in so far as like Uber disrupted the, the livery. And this could be like a really great thing. Right. But this boating jet skis, this side, this is not, this is not somebody like Uber was able to disrupt because everybody for the most part, maybe not well, but Uber drivers know how to drive cars. You know what I mean? This is a much different thing. This is not like a get my motorcycle, which is like what a jet ski is out on, on the water. And so I, I, I'm, I obviously am for the, I'm for the law. I'm for the permit. But my question to you is, is have you seen a, a lot more resources uh, being drained by the FWC because the, even the amount of not just illegal operations, but in the last two years with COVID, there hasn't been a lot of things for people to do. Um, have you seen a lot of resources being drained by an excessive amount of livery applications? Uh, not so much in applications because currently we don't regulate liveries in that setting. So the only time I'm that sorry. I even know that there's a yeah. livery out there is if they come to me to be part of the program to offer the test. So, uh, so uh, yeah, but to answer well, your sort of question, question. Yeah. yeah, to answer your question though, yes, we have seen an uptick in accidents, especially during the, the pandemic times, because like you were saying, uh, getting out on the water was one of the only things you could do for the most part. Uh, so a lot of people came out and recreated. Anybody that wanted to go purchase a boat or a camp or anything else, you realized real quick that those things were sold and gone and, and very fast. Um, so there were a lot of people partaking on the water, uh, whether in, you know, motored boats or, or uh, human powered craft, you know, paddle, uh, paddle boards, kayaks, and those kind of things. So the issue became with all of these uh, persons who found an opportunity, uh, for lack of a better term, to make money on their personal, personal watercraft, you know, as to, hey, well, I can sub, uh, supplement my payment on this thing by renting it out on weekends when I'm using it and that kind of stuff. And so yeah. we've seen, you know, injuries, a lot of damage. And what's happening with this is is what we're generally seeing is the owner or the person who's renting illegally, for lack of a better term, they're just showing up, clicking their ski and disappearing. They're not giving any aid to the person who got hurt. They're not contacting the, uh, the other owners of any of the property that was damaged and things like that. So you're, it's not a victimless crime. And that's yeah. the, the issue behind it all. So... Is the FWC putting together or is the state putting together? So, you know, I, I, while I agree with this bill, I also think like in, in the terms of practicality that there has to be some kind of infrastructure for operators as well. So if you have somebody that's doing it illegal, it doesn't take much to get a BTR, to get insurance, to get set up properly. Now you could, depending on what counties you're in or what, what parts of Florida you're in, it, this is not that difficult of a process. You can get insurance. You can do that. You're still the same jackass who doesn't know what he's doing out there. You know what I mean? Like that part of it hasn't changed. So, and and I and I don't mean to be cruel to recreational boaters as a as a captain that's driven a boat professionally for you know years before I started my business. I saw jet ski people that worked for companies that were doing wild stuff, man. Like these guys, it's like they needed to get pulled off the water and educated. So is the FWC doing anything to help operators get educated insofar as like maybe their local, their local waterways? Because as you know, the second half of that education is knowing the characteristics of your navigable waterways. And that seems like a very challenging piece to this puzzle when you're trying to educate a recreational boater 
on who maybe doesn't have his definitely probably doesn't have his captain's license and knows those 40 questions that you have to take for your TC, your temporary certificate. Well, and that's the, the hard part to reach is because there is no actual operator license for a vessel in Florida. So there's no driver license test and, and thing like that you got to get and meet and require that you can just go out and purchase a boat and put it on the water and operate it. You know, if you were born after 1988 and the boat has more than 10 horsepower, you got to get a voter education card that lasts a lifetime. So, um, like you're saying, if, if they move around the state or go to other locations and they're not familiar with the waterways, there's a lot of stuff, uh, information out there that they're not going to be familiar with. And so there is a lot of education that our officers do out on the water, um, you know, when we're contacting people and, and, uh, and, trying to give them the information that they need because we're, we're not trying to go out there and write tickets. We're not trying to get people off the water. We're trying to let you be safe. So you're safe for yourself. You're safe for everybody else that's on the water. And we have a much easier job out there doing what we're having to do. So it's not about enforcement. We're not out there trying to go write tickets. We're trying to make sure everybody is safe and enjoying what they need to do on the waterways. Yeah. So like, let's say there is a, a, a new, a new operator. Like what would you give, what kind of advice would you give to a first year operator that's opening a livery, you know, that, that maybe has bought, has bought a boat, has bought these boats to, as an entrepreneur is not a boater guy. He's an entrepreneur that wants to get in it. He's done all the stuff that he needs to do. He gets his permit. What advice would you give to him in his first year's operation? Uh, well, outside of the legal requirements that he would have, obviously for business yeah. licensing and things like that, I, I would take a, a, a good boating course, an on hands boating course, not just the online version. Not to say that there's anything less in those, but getting that on hand training, if you don't have that maritime experience of boating, knowing what the weather is going to do, what the water is going to do, how your boat reacts in different situations, things like that. All that experience is going to be something that they can transfer to their employees if they have some and also to their uh, renters, their customers. So that's the big key is getting the, getting the, the water experience from the boat and the environment. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super important. Um, oh man, I had, a, I, I, got, had a I got a, I got a question uh, for, for Seth. Um, Seth, we, we were in a, a, a local, uh, we have a local coalition here in, uh, in Okaloosa County and we had a, um, a call with our, our, uh, Marine, uh, patrol officer with the County. And when he reported the incidents to us or the BUIs, um, uh, it was interesting to note that they don't break it down by like locals and tourist they just say they just assume that if they're renting that they are a tourist and if they're have a boat then they're a local you know a lot of people bring their boats to florida and i was just curious if if you know does the F, how does the fwc determine whether the boater is residential or or uh, or renting it's actually a very hard thing for us to do so unless they get into a incident where they're they're going to have an investigative report. So think of an accident where boats collide, somebody gets hurt, something like that. That's about the only time we as an agency or any other Marine agency as well is going to know whether or not that person is a resident or not, because they may borrow a friend's boat who's a resident, but the operator may be from Kentucky. Yeah. And, and that's one thing I just wanted to bring up, like, is that I feel when data is uh, brought up to like our local government, they don't provide enough uh, detail to what's actually happening because so many people, especially Northwest Florida, a lot of people bring their their jet skis and their boats here. And when they get stopped, they're counted, not counted as a tourist, they're counted as a, a residential or a private boater. And they're assumed to be local. And it's same with like a lot of locals rent boats and they're looked at as tourists. So it's, it, it skews the data a little bit. And it's just one of the things that's kind of a thorn in my side when I'm talking to people and, you know, the there's just not enough uh, you know, granularity in that because, you know, politicians will make rules and laws based on that data. And it, it's really not fair to um, deliveries because it's it doesn't work on our favor in most cases. Oh, certainly. And, and the details there um, in citation data, warning data and accident data, we have, um, you can go by the, the, 
that listed address of the, the persons involved and things like that. So you, you could really get down into the weeds of the details. The problem is, one, that's not often the questions that are asked because they just want an overarching number. Uh, and then, obviously, when you start getting into the weeds of things, you start overwhelming people with numbers and detail. And so there's you've got to have that fine line when you start putting out data. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's, it's always, and to Greg's point, it, anytime I see a, an issue, a systemic issue, whether it be in my company, in our community, in the lawmaking system, it's poor communication is always the, the biggest bottleneck. Poor communication between the operator and the customer. Poor communication between the legislative branch, which, and the, this is, this episode is a result of poor communication. Like we just stumbled upon each other, Seth and I. Like, 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 like I'm doing a, a, another piece of business, and Seth, you know, if Seth was my contact at the FWC, and we started talking about this law, and it was like nobody in the boating industry knew. Like, none of us knew about this law. Like, I had saw something about it in some due diligence I was doing. Like, it popped up in an internet search. And it looked like there was nothing to it. Well, upon further investigation, it's probably the most expansive and comprehensive boater safety law on the books ever written in the state of Florida. And and now this is like what you know you're doing. You guys are doing your part. We're doing our part. You know, we're having this conversation. But this is what this is always like the breakdown between governance and 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 community or business and. And it's like, it's, it, it, so this is why I'm sort of like asking these questions because uh, operators, if we're gonna like put laws on the books and we're gonna do this stuff, then the operators themselves need, we need better resources too from our local community. And it can't just be a one-sided thing. Like we can't continually reach out to the community and to our elected officials to help us. Like it's gotta come back forth, which was sort of, uh, it was telling that nobody from the boater from the livery, water sport, recreational boating community was a part of writing this bill, which the last the pair, last water sports bill, and correct me if I'm wrong, would probably be the White Miskel Act for parasail. And there was a lot of parasails, parasailer or people from the parasail industry that were involved in helping write that law. I mean, what, I mean, would I not? What, am I wrong about that? Or no, it's a job. Uh, what had the result of the parasail thing was a, definitely because. We reached out to the professional community and said, right. obviously, there needs to be there's some safety concerns. There needs to be some regulation in place. If you self-regulate and come up with guidelines that you as a business need to follow, then yeah. it's much easier for you to self-regulate yourself as a community than it is for the government to do it. Yeah, and it's more effective. Correct. Everybody can agree with that. So that yeah. was the result of that. So, yeah. it, it, and with with this voting bill, this was something pushed through from the legislature. It was not lobbied by any individual, as far as I know, or certainly not my agency or anything else. Um, but and of course, things grow and get included when you start talking about things going through uh, the the government side of stuff. Um, yeah. Well, and I, I, again, I think it's 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 needed. Uh, it, it's just like as government goes, it's like it's it, it's implemented, and then there's like all the after effects are like, oh, wait a minute, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Like, okay, well now you know, no, nobody knows. Like, I can other than this show, I have no idea what kind of outreach the the state or the FWC is going to even be be able to get this. I'd like to say that you know we have the ear of everybody, every operator in the state of Florida, and we'll certainly. Get spread the word as best as we can, but man, I imagine over the next year, like there's gonna uh, gonna have to be like you guys are gonna have to. I imagine like how are you gonna reach out to every single operator and let them know, or is it just gonna be one of those things where they're gonna go, hey buddy, you need a permit, and they're gonna go what? And we, we've got a lot of avenues that we're actually gonna use. So we're, we're gonna do some public safety announcements, some PSAs, um, you know, mm. radio, television, those kind of things. We have a bunch of different contacts that have. Um, distribution list for lack of a better term of people that are in livery businesses and things like that so a lot of our uh, temporary test providers online have connections with the liveries that are out there because they're utilizing their service 
you know, um, outreach like yourself. We're going to have it on our website, all those kind of things. And then our officers, as they're out there contacting people, are going to be taking that educational approach to begin with anyway and saying, hey, there is a new law in place. If you haven't heard, this is what you're going to need. This is how you get it and those kind of things. Well, Seth, uh, we appreciate you uh, coming on the show. And I I just have one recommendation uh, for you. And I I don't know if the FDBC has this already, but I really think that it would be great great if the FDC created a livery committee that anytime that there are new th- ideas or regulations you'd like to put in place that you had a committee of 10 or so livery operators in the state that you can bounce these ideas off of um, or just get input to make sure that there's a lot of adoption and it's very successful. Because like Kevin said, we're, we're some of us were blindsided from this. And if you had committee operators from multiple regions in the state, you know, we could have, you know, been very well uh, prepared for this. And I, I think we all will be, you know, once this gets rolled out. But uh, I don't know, just something I thought that might help with the communication aspect between the livery and the, and the FDVC. Sure. No, it, and I appreciate that you brought that up because we do in a way have that. Uh, the FWC has a voting advisory council. It is made up of 14 members. Some of those are appointed by the governor. Some of those are applicant-based, and they represent all of the different facets of the voting community. So you've got commercial members, you've got voting members of the public uh, regulation, those kind of things. So there is supposed to be a member that represents the uh, rental commercial vessel side as a member yeah. of that we, we just, actually one of our friends is is on that council john stevens so that that is a great step we'd like to just see more because you said there are not a lot of livery people on there i think there maybe was three or four sure i looked at the council but having a, a more broader but but um anyways we we uh really yeah. appreciate you um on the show seth and how can people get in touch with you or the fwc if they have uh, any questions about 606 or so if uh, they have else. any livery questions and stuff uh, i i'm going to be the program manager for that so they can just email me uh it's my name with a period so it's seth.wagner at my fwc.com it's the best way to do it so it gives me time to respond back and, and track that i know i responded back um or awesome. and we have a general line as well that's uh the um 850-488-5600 goes to our boating waterway section so boating education questions uh permit questions and they'll they'll send you to the right person or whatever your question may be awesome awesome seth well, we really appreciate it we appreciate you taking the time and um yeah man that's it for uh that's it for this show guys we appreciate you listening and as always keep it awkward